Hello again. I am still fighting with my phone, but my son is working tech support for me, so perhaps we have it figured out this time. We'll see. At any rate, this is a continuation of this project in which I sketched this and then used tracing paper to finalize the lines. Um, I drew this and then I turned it over and used nice heavy graphite lines for all the outlines there and then I used my roller to transfer the graphite lines to here the rolled out clay and then after that I used those lines as a guide um, I have been using this craft knife to cut to up to about halfway down into the clay um, for areas that are supposed to be multi-layered I'm going to be very gentle I did a very light touch here I just sort of scored the surface here because this hair is supposed to be over this leaf this leaf is supposed to be over that leaf and then there's the background layer like when I come into here I'm gonna pull all of that away to the final depth that I want um, as I did here in this sort of triangular space between the legs, the arm, and the waist, um, and all around the outside. Now I intentionally made this uh, the, the, this clay bigger than I needed it to be so that later I could trim it. Um, sometimes I run into problems if I'm not generous enough with it. I end up with problems where I'm just, just up against the edge and I'd like a little more room for the piece to breathe. So that being said, I'm going to continue um, sort of drawing lines to the edge to a depth of almost halfway down and then parallel to the work surface, slicing that portion and removing. So that's the excitement that you've tuned in for here. Now my intention with this is that it will be a an ornament, but if you think I'm not going to make one of these to wear for Yuletide fun, then you, my friend, are deeply mistaken, because I am exactly that ridiculous. Now, uh, you could use all of these methods to make something daintier, as I have done in the past with other things in this, in my Mythos series, like that is... Um, a small version of my air spirit and this is a recent um, frost character so I do have some cool and frosty things but I think people really like Holly um, one of these two will end up being my submission for the local um, art museum's um, Christmas tree exhibit. And people from the community um, can submit handmade ornaments or um, greeting cards or wrapped presents. I don't think what's inside the present matters. I think it's just the the art of the gift wrapping. And so I was thinking I should use these skills I've been working on and submit an ornament. But now that I'm working on a uh, working on an ornament for the specific purpose, I am not happy with what I've been creating. 
and I find that that's often the case. It's one of the reasons that I don't tend to take commissions. Um, usually uh, I like having an inspiration and sometimes it's helpful for me to have a deadline on things, but it's often not helpful for me to have too much constraint um, or too much expectation about what the thing is going to end up being. Um, oftentimes with my faces, they're a bit of a surprise to me. Um, I would like to get good enough that I can make them more like whatever my mental image of them was before I started. But my skills aren't there yet. I haven't been doing this for very long. See, it gets tricky when you get into this, this section right here. And once again, if I can figure out what will make my phone happy, I will actually uh, speed up this part of the video, and you will never have to hear my rambling. Hooray for technology. All right. That'll be enough for now. So, now that I've done that part, I think I'd like to go in with this little dental tool. And I'd like to give a little definition to some of the edges here. neck. I always want to make sure that the neck doesn't disappear entirely. When I'm adding the mica powders later, it'll be important that the neck is relatively close. But in order for it to be nice and elegant, it does need to be fairly recessed back there. All right, I will come back to the face later. Right now I'm just sort of roughing out basic things. And then back. Back needs to be deeper. So this is just giving the nuance of levels in the upper levels. So like over here, the edge of the cuff, I want to go in there, give a little definition where the hand is going to be. And that's so tiny, oh, and there I've broken it, it's so tiny that this is the sort of thing that I might have to go back and, um, and add to later because even a small error there can pretty much obliterate an entire feature. Well, that's okay, because clay is forgiving. I'll get back to you later. Okay, so I think I want to give it a little bit of a cuff there. And then I also want to round this. Little areas here where I've drawn the lines for the folds. Let me go back in there. And that'll probably get lost in later steps. But it reminds me that I had drawn those in. So, you can see that it's already taking shape. So 
some locks of hair. Now, as I did with um, the larger face that I did on the first Holly ornament, I think for a lot of the things that are meant to be um, convex sphere type bits, I'm going to leave them more or less flat here. And then in the next stage, where I create the mold from this original sculpt, then I will use a ball tool and add in. All along here, I want to have little tiny berries. So that's going to be accomplished in the next step. The very largest of them will be made with this ball tool. And I'm going to have to get out the super tiny ones to get all of those little tiny berries in there. Um, but the end result will be much better looking than if I tried to force it in this stage. So again, because this is just the first stage, um, it's okay if there are some errors with this. By the time I finish up that leaf and make the uh, the mold of the whole thing, um, you'll never know that this piece had broken off. It just, it, it won't even be an issue. Now, normally I prefer to add a lot of detail to my leaves. Um, it's one of the things I enjoy doing the most and I like adding a lot of texture um, for sort of a even though it's stylized, it's sort of a hyper-realism stylizing um, rather than a simplification. However, um, holly leaves are really known for being smooth. And when in the last piece, I went ahead and did the, um, the, the sort of texturing that I'm used to doing, it looked pretty. Um, I, I didn't mind the look of it, but seeing as I'm very specifically going for holly leaves right now because of the season and because of what this project is, uh, it was just not what I needed it to be at that time. So, you know, as with so many other things in life, sometimes a thing is perfectly fine. It's just not what you need in that moment. So bearing in mind that detail gets lost um, during this mold and reproduction process, um, particularly because I'm just using another um, chunk of polymer clay as the mold in the next step, rather than um, the softer mold materials that pick up more detail, uh, I'm not too concerned I still think I'm probably not overdoing it, um, but I want to keep these details very light. I just, it's okay if I put the details in, I just, just keep them, keep them light. See there, so that still gives a little bit of a leafy natural texture, um, but it won't be too much. And then I'm going to add in just a smidge. You know, well, I was thinking, oh, it won't be much. It won't be much. And it turns out to be the dominant thing. Oh well. Oh well. And add a little bit more that points toward those points. There are holly leaves that don't look like this at all. Um, I went um, looking at a wide variety of holly uh, varietals online and um, I thought about doing some of the varieties that are mostly oval shaped 
But the trouble is you have to think about um, how people are going to perceive it. And when they look at this leaf here, the average person is going to see a holly leaf. Um, and that's the important thing. Art, in many cases, and I hope that this is one, um, is about communication. You know, this is a form of communication. And if I, what I want to say is that this is a holly fairy or a holly spirit, um, and I'm not going to have the colors to work with, since I'm more or less doing this in a quilt copper, uh, what I really need to do then is focus on the form, the shape, and the things that are going to be most recognizable. So it's a universal idea of what holly is, even if it's not necessarily how a lot of holly leaves look. I thought strongly about um, not sculpting these leaves in at all and instead um, making them separately and laying them on. So this is plan A and if it ends up not working out to my satisfaction, my next attempt will be to build it up rather than to cut it away. I, I like to have leaves that have a little bit more life to them, um, that aren't just sort of a, a, a flat picture of an idealized leaf. But again, for the sake of making it recognizable, these are going to be flatter than I would normally prefer. That's all right. I think actually this is going to be lovely. This might be the one that I decide to submit. Yeah, that'll do. I'll clean that up later. So anyway, you get the idea. And I will um, do a little bit more work, and then I will film the next portion of it, where I go in and do detail and finish up the uh, this original and bake it in preparation, making mold. See you then.